Good to go. Okay, so we have a, um, a fairly brief agenda tonight. Uh, we have one application, one new application in front of us, and we also have some minutes to review. And uh, hopefully you've all seen those and the suggested edits that I had sent into um, uh, today. So we can talk through those because as Chip has pointed out a couple of times, the appeals board uh, needs to have those in hand in order to schedule the appeal on our earlier uh, decision, uh, the Morash decision. Um, so there's Henry and Don. Give them a second. Hi, Henry and Don. Glad you could join us. We just we just commenced. Hi, Paula. Hi. Um, and I was saying we have a, a pretty brief agenda tonight. We have one regular application, and we do need to work through um, the minutes and get those approved so that we can pass those along to the uh, the appeals board for their pending appeal. Um, so. Um, the one application that we do have is for a medical cannabis retail store um, on Main Street. Um, and so um, tonight, I'm, I apologize. You're going to have to, uh, to tell me how to pronounce your last name. I won't attempt it and, and mangle it, so. It's LaSalle, but I'll answer to anything similar. <laughs> LaSalle? Yeah. Oh. Yes. Okay. All right. Um, so the application before us tonight, as I mentioned, is for um, um, a medical marijuana retail store. And just to refresh everyone's memory, the process for this is, is really a two-part piece for, uh, for cannabis establishments. First of all, uh, it must meet the requirements of the LUO. And so we go through a regular site review process because it is a new business in town. And secondly, um, it is required uh, by the town of Reedfield's ordinance that a marijuana establishment license um, also be pro procured from the town. And the process for this is that both of those pieces initially come to us, to the planning board um, for review and then um, assuming um, that we work through the process and approve those, they would be uh, then presented to the select board for review and they have uh, final approval authority on this type of application. So again, two sets of standards. The standards are related to each other certainly, but they are somewhat different. Uh, but the planning board is, is charged with reviewing all of those standards initially before the application is presented to the select board. So um, with that, uh, for, um, for our new applicant tonight, um, uh, our general process is <clears throat> that we take an initial look at new applications um, in a first meeting and we evaluate those for completeness. And um, if we make a determination, um, a formal determination that the application is complete, um, then we would schedule the application for a public hearing. Um, we would um, notify abutting property owners um, in case they want to make comment and then schedule um, a second review um, at an additional meeting. It's very common for us to approve applications in two meetings but uh, there are a number of cases where for various reasons, um, it, takes, it takes longer than that. Uh, depends on the circumstances and on the issues that might arise. So, but generally that is the process we follow. So um, I would um, ask you um, first, if you could summarize your application, uh, just describe for us your proposal, what you would like to do and highlight anything you think is, is of particular importance. And then the board likely will have some questions for you, um, but it would be uh, very helpful if you could start with a summary for us. 
Uh, sure. Um, essentially, I found the location. It used to be the old cafe on the corner. It's 1149 Main Street. There's a small retail location inside that's 300 square feet that I'd like to use for my, my retail cannabis um, facility. I do my growing at my farm in North Anson, uh, which would never be present there. Um, so this would strictly be retail. With my state licenses that I have, I am allowed to have one retail location, and this is the one that I'm proposing and trying to get. <laughs> so that's essentially it. Um, as for um, hours, we kind of took into account that it is a small community, and I know that there are residents residents living there or that could potentially live there. So we've taken that into consideration and made our hours just 10 to 6 um, and then closed on Tuesday and Wednesday. So it's fairly reasonable business hours. Um, we have uh, a Simply Safe system, which is a 24 hour monitoring system that immediately would contact us as well as authorities if there were to be any issues, um, as well as proper lighting, <laughs> proper ventilation, um, that's basically it. As, as for the, the residents, I, I understand that that is a point that could be of concern, but I would like to note that there is one family residence in the building. Um, we've actually brought the building owner with us in case there were any questions that we need to get clarified, um, because we've discussed some possibilities there. Um, there currently is no one. There is no family that does live there. They've moved out. Um, so... Um, that's the only real thing to note. Um, there will be a, there are two doors that to the shop itself that are completely just for the shop. Um, the residence has its own entrance that's before that. So it would be completely private on its own. Um, there, the second door will be us from the front, from the street side. And that's actually not in yet. That's something that upon approval will be put in and that will be the main entrance. There will be no one coming through the back or disrupting any sort of residence situation. Um, Maybe you could introduce your um, Dan. I'm sorry, this is my fiance, Kurt. Um, he's been uh, immensely supportive through this dream of mine for years that's culminated to this. And this is Dan Hildebrandt and he's the owner of the building. I'm sorry. <laughs> The team. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So I would open it up to planning board members. Do you have any any questions? I had a, a couple. Okay, go ahead, Chuck. One is I, I know that the, the landlord's there, but don't we usually need some sort of right title and interest, you know, like um, a, a lease or an agreement to lease or purchase and sale or some something to show some sort of right title and interest. Yeah, that, that, was the, that was the only issue that I had identified when I looked at this. I didn't see any, uh, any lease or anything that would demonstrate TRI. So perhaps you could respond to that. We, we generally require, I mean, if you own the property, we would ask for a copy of the deed. Um, and if you're leasing it, uh, we would be looking for, uh, for the lease itself. And I didn't see that in the package. I can definitely answer that. So the reason that we haven't gone forward with that and part of the reason that I've asked Dan to be here today is because there are actually a couple of different options. Um, without an actual approval, obviously I wasn't sure about signing anything or getting into an official agreement because this is, this is the business I'm going to start. <laughs> um, so, um, the other thing is that, as I mentioned, there's a three bedroom residence upstairs that's a family residence. So if that were to be of concern to you, it's something that we've already discussed to add that in to the lease so that I would lease that as well and to make sure that no family would be there. So, so that's why there is nothing on that. We've already discussed an agreement. Um, Dan's already said he would get it to me. It's just the fact that we kind of wanted to hear from you and what your concerns were so that we could address that. Because if we don't need to rent it, obviously I don't need to do that. But if it's of concern and that would fix that, I will. So that's kind of why there's nothing in solid. <laughs> Another question I had was, you. In your application, 
you talked about the odor control system that you would be installing. And I was just wondering what sort of odor would come from a retail store like this? Um, the only thing would be of the cannabis itself, which I personally, I mean, I've been in this environment a lot and I've, I've done a lot of research in other shops and I don't find the odor to be of any nuisance, uh, but some people might. So just to cover our bases, I have um, just, it's just an air filter system that has the option of uh, going into the ductwork and then blowing outside or just filtrates inside. So for the sake of, again, not being a nuisance, it would just filter all of the air within the 300 square foot space. It's just a precaution. It's not necessary. But you Everything that go, on. go on. Everything that I have would be in sealed containers at all times, except for when I open them to. So you're not growing anything there? No, never. OK. And I, I would assume that you address the odor question in part because I don't remember exactly where it is in the application material, but I think that there is, is something that requires a, a, some kind of a statement about odor control. Um, yeah, yeah. It was just about um, the nuisance that could be presented to anyone around, and that's just my solution to it. And my last question is, why refill? I knew you were going to ask that. I thought about that a lot. Um, to be honest, anybody who lives here should really know why. I mean, I don't live here, but ever since I found this place, I mean, we've talked about moving here. We, we have our house in North Anson, but it's, it's just beautiful. Everything about it, it's a huge camping site. We're outdoor people. Everything about it just felt like home. We've, we've traveled all over Maine. We used to have a house in Limestone, and we've been out to the Holton, we've been out to Callis, we, we, we traveled everywhere and it wasn't until I found Reefield, and this is gonna sound like I'm just saying it, but I'm not. It wasn't until I found Reefield that I really wanted to be here. And I thought it just has to be the universe giving me this, this shop and this town because it all just felt perfect. So that's why. Okay. Thanks. <laughs> yeah. Um, others? Just wanted to follow up about parking. Yes. So you've got a couple of spots that, that you reference in the application. Uh, so I know there's some some on street parking there, but it, but the parking would be around the backside. Is that I'm trying to picture where you park, where the parking would be. The parking would be out front of the building. I think there are two spots there, right? Well, I don't think I would limit myself. Hmm. If you are to take command of the rest of the building. Right. I mean, there's upwards of six to eight spots out back that would not interrupt the lower tenants space. Mm -hmm. And of course, the on street parking, you know, we'd rather have people utilizing the back parking during winter than the front right. parking. Right. And there's an easy means of walk way to their front entry from those parking areas. It's through the old cafe terrace and the old entry to the mm -hmm. upper apartment and then down the sidewalk to the door. It's a very short distance. I mean, people usually come in and out fairly quickly. It's not a perusing situation. So, I mean, right. parking is yeah. park not really too much of an issue. So I, I would assume um, when and if there is a lease, that the lease would include some provision for the parking spots in the back? I would also assume that. Absolutely can. <laughs> and and uh, just to backtrack a little bit, if I don't want to peg them to a lease and lose money, perhaps a letter of intent in, 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 uh, together, her and I would suffice for the board's, um, for the board's needs until approval is set, just so, you know, she doesn't lose any money with me and I'm just cooperating and working with her. We can certainly um, submit a lease draft. I mean, a, 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 you know, a lease draft that's also an effort to bring in what the board, you know, and what the town would not necessarily require, but like to see how it works and, you know, how it's written, especially where, with regard to parking and access and hours. How will you deal if you, so there's one other unit there that would be rented out to tenants or two units? Yeah, so currently it is permitted as a duplex, um, apartment above and apartment below. Currently, the apartment below is rehabbed and um, has a new tenant in it for a couple months now. 
the upstairs apartment has recently become vacant and I was about to rehab it and let it to a new tenant. Um, and if, uh, uh, if, our, um, if our permitting party here needs to, um, it sounds like she would just take over the rest of the building to appease the city and the board. I, I was just concerned about the tenants and the downstairs and the upstairs. It'd be, how will you deal with complaints by the tenants about odor or the fact that there's this business oh. going? Well, it's the odor concerns because we, we're definitely taking care of that. And I'm not really sure what other concerns there, there really would be um, because our shop has its own entrances uh, in, all, in all respects. And there's another shop right across the street. So it's not like, it, it's really no different. <laughs> I don't know that the tenants would not be averse to uh, a, a little lease inclusion, a lease update to their lease, um, indicating their acceptance of that situation that we're talking about. Yeah. Very nice, very nice younger couple. Okay. Other will, there be, will there be any use of water there? Uh, I have no need for it. Um, there is a sink in the back, but what I do, it doesn't, I don't need it. Isn't that building on the shared sewer system, septic system? No. You got your own. We have our own tank, but the leach field is shared with the fire department and the library and us. So our allotment, which is 60% of that leach field's consumption or feed, um, we'd still be well below it. I mean, we're allowed six bedrooms. Right now, we're only using two bedrooms. And if our um, potential permittee here um, uses the rest of the building, it'll probably be, remain at an average of three bedrooms. The consumption is very, very low there, extremely low. We're, I think we're allowed upwards of 600 GPD and we need about 40. Currently, with one tenant, I should I should add. Anyone else have questions, concerns? There's nothing else. Uh, Jan's trying to say something, but yeah. she's muted. <laughs> oh, okay, Jan. Sorry, I was to the ether there. Can you hear me now? Yes. Yes. Hi, I was wondering if you could just talk a little bit about the signage that you contemplate putting up. I see under the signage section, you talk about, um, you know, a, it's a cannabis consumption warning that you plan to post on the inside, but can you just talk about the signage that you plan to put, at, whether in the window or outside or a sandwich board and how you plan to advertise? Uh, well, I would have just the basic sign. I, I think I've included um, what the logo looks like. It's pretty simple logo. Yeah, it's just um, and as for signage, I, I would, as in, I already have to do what's required by OMP, which is what I listed in here. But if the township had any further requirements, I would, I would do those as well. So I'm, I'm not speaking to signage, like warning type signage. I'm talking about like your advertising sign. Do you plan to put it in the window? Is it going to be sort of perpendicular to the building? Are you planning on using any sandwich boards or anything like that? No, I, I, I'm not going to do anything like that. Um, the only thing I would do is, again, it depends on what, what the township allowances are, but I kind of imagine just putting my sign in the window just with, you know, of course, the medical cross and the 21 and over only signage and those kinds of things. But um, I don't really plan on going overboard with any sort of advertising or flags or anything. It's, that's not really the, the energy I'm going for with it anyway. And so when you say your logo, it's the happy camper. It's a little camper. I'm looking for it in your application. I'm just, I know it's here. It's a picture of like a VW bus or something like that. Yes. <laughs> okay. Yep. And it says happy camper cannabis. And that'll be the name of the store as well. I'm sorry, I see you nodding your head, but I can't hear you, sorry. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Chair, sure, I, um, that is probably one of my only concerns. And I would prefer to see a, some signage that um, 
a lot of flashing light That's or, not... or anything uh, that uh, anything too aggressive. Well, again, that's not that's not really what I'm trying to do. I really the only lights that I really intended are the required ones for security. That's I didn't plan on having a a light a, a lighted <clears throat> sign or anything like that. Or maybe the only light would probably be the the cross, the medical cross, um, just because that's how people know. Um, but I don't plan on anything flashing or anything flashy. And I even have thought about if if there were concerns of people being able to see inside, I could cover up the window and kind of make it just like a holiday display or something. So it, I'm not really concerned with people knowing what I'm doing because I, I also have a, a Leafly account. I, I also have other avenues where once I have an address, I mean, the word will get out and the patients will know. Explain, I, explain Leafly. So Leafly is, um, so if you are a medical patient and you're going on vacation and you're going someplace unfamiliar, but you suffer from anxiety or some other medical issue, um, you would go to leafly.com and you type in the town and anybody who has an account with them or is an advertiser with them, you would come up and your specials and your hours and people can kind of from out of state. And especially since this is an area with a lot of campers and travelers, um, they can go on there and find us. And so we don't really need to advertise. We're already advertising in a, in a different way. I have no intent of being flashy in any way. <laughs> Sounds like it's all covered. <laughs> I tried. <laughs> Um, I'm sorry, could I ask just one more question? Um, and I may be thinking of a different property, but is this property currently on the market? Yes. Okay. Um, any thoughts on how that might affect the lease situation? Um, so from, from my perspective is, I, I mean, I love this building. I, so far, I love this town. And um, once I'm in here, up, upon the success that I imagine I will have, I, I, we've discussed actually purchasing it um, because that would be what would make the most sense for us. Um, so again, that would be once we're in and we see that this is really where we want to be, it's really working and we, you know, then that, that's 100% on the table. It's, it's been a very serious discussion for us. Actually, I would add that, and, and, you know, not that it would allay any, um, you know, any fears or thoughts about what could happen at a, after a sale. I mean, I think, you know, from, from a realtor perspective and from an investor's perspective, it's an investment building. Um, if anybody were to purchase it for the, for the purpose of occupying it, they would likely have to honor any lease that's there anyways until the, uh, until the end of that lease. Okay. The other tenant that, that's in there right now, are they subject to... Um, at least term of, of a year or more, or is it a month to month situation? And what are you contemplating with this lease? They signed a one year lease. I hope they stay for 20 years. <laughs> and you're contemplating signing a, a year plus lease as well. That's your intention? Well, the norm for a, when I sign, I'm also a property manager and area broker. In Hallowell, uh, when I sign a commercial lease, it's usually three years. It'll be either a uh, gross lease or a triple net. Okay. And I'm sorry, with respect to the applicant, that's your intention as well, is to sign a multi-year lease? Yes, we actually. have not spoken about it, but I'm, you know, considering her professionalism, she probably understands a three-year lease is the minimum she can get into. Yeah. So to the applicant, is it your plan? Yes, it is. That's all I have. Thanks, Jan. Anything else? Other questions? Anyone? And if not, um, we're ready for motion. I'll make a motion to find the application complete, subject to them submitting a tentative lease with a uh, letter of intent signed by the parties about that they intend to enter the lease subject to approval from the town and uh, schedule public hearing and notify butters. 
Second. Second them. Okay, Bill, seconds? Discussion? I would just say that that letter of, in, sorry, I would just say that letter of intent, I'd like to see the lease term be put into that letter of intent. And probably information about parking as well. In the lease. Correct. Aren't we looking at a letter of intent and lease draft? Right. Those things would be in the lease draft. Okay. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Further discussion? I will take a vote. Um, Don? Yes. Henry? Yes. Jack? Yes. Jan? Yes. Noel? Yes. And Bill? Yes. And Paula, yes. Okay, we thank you very much uh, for coming in. That was helpful. And um, you can uh, speak with Chip about the scheduling of a subsequent planning board meeting. Um, we typically hold two meetings a month, um, but for various reasons, uh, one of which right now is because it's summer and uh, people are, are traveling and so forth. Um, we may be limited to one a month for a couple of months, but uh, follow up with Chip and he can let you know uh, when it's scheduled uh, to come back before us for the hearing and for the board's uh, deliberation. And again, thank you very much. Thank you so much. I appreciate everyone listening to us and thank you. Good job. Okay. We'll be moving on to uh, approving minutes. So Okay. You don't have to sit around and watch that. Watch it will be. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Okay, so we have, um, as I mentioned at the beginning, uh, the appeals board uh, needs to have all of the minutes that address the Morash application and um, so uh, Angelica has been working diligently on those. Um, there have been some comments provided and um, um, I provided some suggested L edits. Um, it was only earlier today that I got those together and sent them to Angelica. So I don't know that anyone has had a chance to look at those, but um, I can, and we can do this a couple of different ways. Uh, we can run through them uh, page by page if you'd like. Um, I don't know if you have them in front of you. Does everyone have those? With, with my suggested edits. Angelica did send those out earlier this afternoon. Yeah, and I, I added my comments to yours, Paula, and sent okay. it back to everybody. Okay, oh, I, didn't, um, I didn't see them. Was, so yep. Paula, um, I, re I read them earlier, but I have not seen your comments. So what would be helpful to me is just to know what changes you made. Yeah, okay. Um, well, hold on just a minute. Uh, let's start with, we had two sets. One was uh, April 12th, the other was May 24th. So let's start with April 12th. Yeah, I didn't see any track changes of your edits, Paul, or anything. Well, I, um, Angelica, I don't know what happened to those. I sent them to you with track changes. Yeah. And, and, and um, did you want me to leave the the changes in there? As, oh, as yes. Yeah. Yeah. So I just accepted them and then I saved Oh, oh it. okay. All right. That explains it. Yeah. Um, yeah but I think from now on, I just wasn't aware that that's how you would prefer them. Um, well, if um, I don't know that everyone is sitting in front of their computer, but um, I, I have them up in front of me. I mean, can we share them on the screen or something? I don't know. I guess uh, Bill and Noel wouldn't be able to see them if we do that. I have a copy. 
But it looks like you have them in front of you. You you have a version that has the edits in it, Bill? Jack's edits, but he doesn't have Paula's edits. So he, because those are from, I think those are from last week. Right. Yeah, so those are from last week. So those just don't, those are not the edits. I didn't from date when I picked them up, so I showed it. Well, I, I, I had sent those with track changes to you um, earlier this afternoon, Angelica. Is it possible for you to put that version yeah. up on the screen? The one I had sent to you with track changes. I don't know how to do that from Chip's computer necessarily. Do you want me to go? I can go pull it up. I am not set up to do that on this computer here, so. Okay. If she could just email them to all of us, maybe most of us could pull it up for you. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I can do that real quick. Here, give me just a minute. Take a two minute break. And <laughs> yeah. Yep. I made, a few, I, if, I made a few edits after that, Paul, you know, this, this, this afternoon after I saw yours, Paula. Yeah. Okay. Um, but I can just go through those verbally if that's the easiest thing. I don't know. So I, I had made comments earlier and Angelica just put them in. And so the versions that I think Paula and you worked from, Henry, already had my changes in there. So if you caught anything wrong with it, you could... Wouldn't feel up I, track I tried. I tried to keep mine substantive. Let's just put it that way. Uh -huh. Un unlike me. <laughs> oh, I didn't. Well, I was, I couldn't tell what your edits were. <laughs> oh, well, that's right. You didn't see. You didn't see what my edits were. Um, you know, principally, I was I was concerned with substantive edits, and because you know, the, Morash and Batar in particular, that were the subject of some of these minutes, are are pretty prominent and, and controversial. There were certain things I just wanted to make sure got included and, and were mentioned and were, were clear. And so I made substantive edits principally, but I came across a number of things that just because I was there, I changed. Like, you know, there are a number of references to more ashes, you know, in the, in the possessive and I, you know, yeah. I, I, I changed a few little things like that, but those are those are unimportant, really, in the grand scheme. I don't. I just quickly read them, so I'm sure you did a more thorough job. I didn't spend much time. There, there was more that could have been done, but I, I, I didn't have the time to. I didn't have any more time to spend on it. So. No. So there was just just for clarity, Paula. There are only two sets we have to review, right? That that's right. There, all of the sets. Um, I think what happened was that Chip sent around all of the sets of minutes that dealt with the Morash application, but we'd already approved, reviewed, and approved most of those. The only two sets, the the recent ones that had not been approved, were four twelve okay. and five twenty four. Okay, so those are the only two sets we have to approve tonight. At the um, and actually there was one more set I forget the date on it but it was just um, it was just the set of minutes where we had been talking about the ordinance revisions and so the minutes just reflect the summary that I had put together on what those revisions were going to be um, that's from 329 that sounds right yeah yeah and we had looked at those previously, but I had asked Angelica to revise them to be consistent with the, the verbiage of the summary that I had put together. And she's she's now done that. Why don't we start with those ones? Um, yeah, that would be easy. <laughs> um, so, um, so the, I, uh, those are March, you said? March 29th, 2022, and they're okay. in your and they're in your email from Angelica yesterday at 3:42 p.m. And as I mentioned, that was a set that we had we had looked at those and talked about them briefly um, at a at a previous meeting, and I had asked her to make the language consistent with the summary that I had done for the select board. Um, because it was a little bit different uh, in the minutes that she had taken. So she did that and 
the revised version reflects the language of that summary. Yeah, I have no comments on, uh, okay. on those. Anyone questions. have comments or questions about that? No. I make a motion to approve the minutes from March 29th, 2022 as amended. There's a second. Second. Okay, motion and a second to approve. Further discussion? Let's take a vote. Uh, John? Yes. Henry? Yes. Jack? Yes. Jan? Yes. Bill? Yes. Noel? Yes. And Paula, yes. You should all have the uh, minutes in your email right now. She printed out copies for those here. I heard it go okay. through. So. so these are Paula's red line? Yes. Okay. And then we have a separate Henry red line, but that already had Paula's changes in it. Is that right? Correct. Apparently. Okay. I wasn't sure. <laughs> I'm I'm a, little, I'm a little lost, but I think right, my my ignore mine except for if I can just verbally tell you which paragraph to change. It's not a big deal. Okay. At least did I read you, them. Did you guys get them yet in your email? I haven't got it yet. I haven't either. Nope. I haven't got it yet. I just saw it. Okay. Forwarded what Paula sent you, which is what I expected. Okay. Should come any second now. This is, this is a copy of what you sent out yesterday. Um, this is what Paula sent me this morning. And this then, morning. Yeah, so that's why you didn't have that in the notebook. And Bill, it's a copy with, with revisions in it. Um, underline, strike out. That's the one she just gave you. Bill. Yeah, I did, I did do a paper copy. I, didn't, I yeah. just emailed I, I just realized I even made a spelling error in my edit that I gave back to you. So <laughs> Good you, job. Can, you, you can ignore that now. <laughs> now that I'm rereading, I, should, I should have, shouldn't have done it so quickly. It happened. That that Got it. Does everybody have them? Yeah. Okay. No, that's all right. And these would have Henry's edits too? No, um, they were in two separate documents apparently. And so what you have, the, the, the red line version that you have, those are my my edits. Okay. So, so which one are we opening first? The, the April 12th? Ones. I've got them now. April 12th, right. Okay. April. So why, why don't we, um, you know, I don't, I don't want to have to um, um, yeah, that's all good. run through every, every single change. Maybe if you want to look at them page by page. And I, I would say that in, in, <laughs> In some places, um, I did some things like change uh, more ashes appears in these minutes, like yeah, yeah. many times. And in some locations, um, I changed it from the possessive to a plural, but I missed some. And so that's, um, yeah. uh, that's inconsistent. When you get to the bottom of this page, I, I missed. Those were, my, those were my errors too. I missed several, so uh, those, those should be changed. So the only, the only, so I'll just focus on my substantive edits, then I did, which are just a couple on this set. So on page two, one, two, three, fourth paragraph from the bottom, where it's read, Eric asked if the Morashes built a 2100 square foot. Do you see that sentence? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you see that, Paula? I, I'm 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 looking for it. You said it's page oh, page, page page two page, okay, one okay. two yes three, I, see it. I see it where it says Eric asked I was I put Eric Falconer I assume that's who was asking the question I was just trying okay. to make it clear 
because yeah. in each of the other paragraphs it talks it has the full name That's unless awesome. they're a board member yeah yeah well i'm wondering in the change you made on the first page um right when you had the strikeouts right before the paragraph that begins with scott morash you had this explanation about a two-step process and i was wondering why you took that out I, I I found it um, I found it really confusing the way it was expressed. No, I didn't write that. I took that out. Oh, I see. I did not. You, you I, do you do say that a lot, however. I well, say what? The two step process. That's like your thing. You always say that. It's quite common for you to say the two step process. Well, I don't think it is a two-step process. I think it's a multi-step process. I think it's it's not steps. It's it's multi-pronged, maybe, but it's <laughs> uh, it's not two separate steps. I'm just so teasing you. I just I found it confusing, um, and so I just I just replaced it um, with the underlined sentence before because, um, and the Paula would like to know. Um, I just found redundant. I would, I would also add Justin Morgan after, you know, anytime you, Angelic, anytime there's a name of a person that's not a board member, put the full name of the person. Sure, okay. His name is Justin Morgan. Mm -hmm. Yep. Jack, do you, do you think that the new sentence where, um, you know, I, I replaced that with something that says that um, both the, the standards concerning replacement and, and expansion of a non-conforming structure are applicable. And so that was the sentence that I wrote right. to replace the two-step process sentence. Do you think that is adequate or do you think that that should be modified somehow? Well, I recall you did I think Angelica got it from what you said, this two-step process where we would first look at whether the structure can be replaced and meet all setbacks, can be conforming or can be conforming to the greatest practical extent. Mm -hmm. And then step two would be look at a proposal for expansion. I guess it's the same. Yeah, I think it's clear the way you've rewritten it. I mean, I think it, the intent's the same. Um, you say they're both applicable, but then it doesn't say how they're applicable. I guess you say, which includes a demonstration of compliance with setback compliance to the greatest practical extent. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, thinking, thinking back on these situations where this has come up, where there has been either the removal or the movement of a, of a building and it's being replaced you know, in, in reality, we've never, we've never dealt with those situations in two separate steps. I guess that was, that was my issue. And I think that's more your thing than mine, Jack, actually. <laughs> <laughs> but um, anyway, it was just, it was just an attempt to, to make it clear. And if anyone has better language, I certainly would welcome that. Um. It's the, the it's the replacement of a non-conforming structure with a similar size structure. Didn't you have that somewhere? Yeah, you, that, you took that out. And and also the way this was expressed. I mean, one of the steps is not constructing a similar sized replacement. I mean. Um, it's, you know, we might consider what that might look like, but, um, you know, we wouldn't require them to put forward a plan for construction of a similar size structure. I mean, 
you know, that that is not the process. So when I, I read the two steps, I'm thinking, no, we wouldn't require them to put that forward and then to put forward a proposal to expand it. It's, it's, it's not separated in that way. Okay. Okay. I think it reads okay. Does it make sense? Jan, does it make sense to you? I think it's more clear the way it's rewritten. Okay. Okay. My, my other edit was on page three, first sentence. Sorry, I'm just trying to move it along. Page, okay. And where it says Henry asked to clarify the square footage. Yeah. I would just add of the home mm -hmm. at 2,600 square feet. And, and Angelica, there's a little punctuation yep. mess at the end of that. So if if you could just fix that while you're in there. What was that, Paula? I'm sorry. Um, at the end of that sentence that Henry was talking about um, after 2,600 square feet, right. there was a period, a comma, and then another period that just needs to be cleaned up. Okay, so was there anything else on, on page on page two? No. Oh, oh, the one the one thing I, I mentioned this earlier, but I missed a couple of places where I, I made some changes to where it says more ashes as as possessive down at the end of the last full paragraph. Um, there are three more of those. And if you could change the, um, if you could change that to an ES instead of the possessive form. Yes, I can. Okay, uh, page three. Page four. I have an edit to the paragraph in the old business. Um, second, second paragraph. On page says Chip, four. Page four. Mm -hmm. Okay. It says Chip announced that an application will be submitted soon. Da, 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 that one. About halfway through that, it says Henry answered Chip answered that chip is supposed to charge an application fee and then it talks up it's a bit confusing the way it was written so i rewrote it so it would say um it's in it's in that email angelica if you just wanted to look at it in your in your other email but i'll just read it here for the purposes of reading it i'm um, yeah. supposed to charge an application fee uh, upon submittal of an application and a permit fee once or if the application is approved the application fee for a small scale system is the standard building permit fee. The permit fee is based on a kilowatt, uh, kilowattage with a minimum fee of $25. Okay. And that's what you put in your, uh, yep. in your email? Okay. You just, okay. If you just open my email, it'll be in there. Awesome. It just, it just replaces that last sentence to clarify okay. the fees. Okay, anything else, anyone? Any page? Okay, if not, I would take a motion. Chair, I'll take a motion to approve the minutes of April 12th, is that right? Yep. Is there a second? Second. Discussion? As amended, did he say? Uh, as amended. Okay. Yeah, he said as amended. Okay. Um, okay, motion, second, further discussion? 
I'll take a vote. Uh, Don. Yes. Henry. Yes. Jack. Yes. Jan. Yes. Bill. Yes. Noel. Yes. And Paula. Yes. Okay. Um. And uh, the second set is May twenty fourth. Oh, Angelica, while you were getting the copies together, we did consider the March 29th minutes and voted to approve those. Wonderful, that's great news. <laughs> I will watch the video so that I can document it properly. <laughs> Okay, um, May 24th. Um, so some, some of these edits are the same or similar to some of the edits that appeared um, in the April minutes, uh, but there are some differences. Um, one of the, the big things um, in the, let's see, the one, the second long paragraph on the first page, um, at the very end of that, um, I, I attempted to figure out exactly what this was about and to reword it because I found it confusing. But ultimately I abandoned that effort and just eliminated it because I was having a lot of trouble with it. And um, I don't know that it is critical to the, uh, to the minutes themselves. Um, yeah, it was, I think it was more about the hypothetical explanation of how it worked, how it would work rather than the yeah. substantive nature of the actual application. Yeah, it, it, it really did, her, did. Did he try to, I thought he brought up that we had made decisions differently in the past. And he mentioned Cindy Smart and there was some brief discussion about Cindy Smart's thing. And then we, didn't we then say, well, that's, we're not gonna go down that road or something to that effect. Somewhere else in here, there's an oblique reference to the Cindy Smart thing. Because I remember looking at that. It was in a different, was in a different location. Um, in this set of minutes? I think it's in this set. Hold on a minute, maybe I can find it. Yeah, because I think it's Oh yeah, on page three. I think it's towards, I think I want to say it's at the very end of the Marash, right yes. before the box started. Yes, yes it is. It's that last paragraph before the Batar public meeting. Page, page two, end of page two. But yeah, I'm not even sure if that's necessary. I just didn't know if I was supposed to add in his like closing statement type of a thing or, or if that's, you know, can be left out. What we, what we said back to him, should that be in there? Well, actually, this is a different right. This is a different property. This isn't Cindy Smart. This is Nova's point. Um, I was thinking there was yet another reference. Um, is it necessary to have even this reference in the minutes? Yeah, you know, I, like I, I don't think there's anything that requires us to capture every single <clears throat> comment or, or thought that's that's made at the meeting in the minutes so um well it's not well, substantive to this decision i mean he, no, it he, isn't. he he was saying it as a conjecture or comparison point in his mind but there's no right. there's, it never came up during the review or anything you know it right. wasn't right it wasn't substantive to it yeah I would yeah, recommend. Are you comfortable it. with just taking that out? Yeah. I, I would recommend deleting it. Will do. Okay, so back, let's see. Um, anything, anything on page one? 
you spelled my name wrong. <laughs> oh, and not Ian. Got it. So the uh, date of 511 needs to be changed there again to 21, not 22. Is it? Which date are you talking about, John? Uh, the first paragraph public hearing, it references public hearing continuation of 111, 22, 4, 12, 22, and 511. That was actually 21. Was it? Yeah. Uh, well, yeah, it can't be 511, 22, which would be after, no, right before this meeting. Yeah. It could but be. The, it could if be. you go back well, to the April one, it, it, it says 21 in the April one. So it does, it, yeah. It does, you're right. Oh, well, that was a long application. Well, it, it did come in in 21. Um, is it 21? Yes. But yep. didn't we just decide it in this past May? No. Well, actually, I mean, if we're going to put all all of the all of the dates uh, you know, to which the public hearing was continued, it's it's more than just three because we had, um, I think it came in initially in, I don't remember the month, maybe it was. Like November of 21, I thought. Was so it many. November of 21? But anyway, yeah, it April, was. April 21. It was continued a number of times. Um, there was a break in between because, you know, they went and requested a variance from the appeals board and so forth. But I think we'd have to look back to make sure that we, we've got all those dates right and looking at it again, because um, there were more than three. Right, but if you, go to the, if you go to the April minutes that we just voted on, it, that's where it says 5-11-21. So I'm just yeah. trying to be consistent with that. It, it was 5-11-21 because that was a Tuesday night of a regular planning board meeting. 5-11-22 is on a Wednesday night. It's, which it's we on Wednesday went. and we didn't meet then. Um, we definitely didn't meet. Yeah. So it may be, Chip, right. could, could you, could you go in and look at that and find all those dates? Because, um, you know, we had opened a public hearing at one point and it was continued several times. Um, and if 511 was one, 511 was one of those dates, um, you know, it's, it's out of order here. And so they should be put, they should be put back in order. I are you sure it's 21, not 22? Yes. yes. Positive. Here's the dates that the Board of Appeals asked for. 4, 27, 21. 5, 11, 21. 5, 25, 21. 1, 11, 22. 4, 12, 22. And 5, 24, 22. Yeah, okay. And so most of those dates... Uh, were dates to which we had continued the hearing. Not all of them, because it came in initially and a number of different things went on, but it was continued several different times. At the, at the top of these minutes, it's a little, I just wonder if it could be set out differently. Um, I don't know, the minutes of May 24, 2022. Maybe just a space between refill planning board and the next stop. Okay. Anyway, never mind. So, um, I, Chip and Angelica, could you go back and check those dates and yes. and insert them uh, the correct dates here? I have another question about page one. It's more of a, it's more of a, maybe we can do better in the future kind of question, which is um, the attending people by Zoom who are not in the room, we, we should be able to get their actual names. Um, and maybe we could ask that in the future uh, if we have a public hearing or a meeting and there's somebody that just says moon unit you know, we could perhaps um, ask them what their actual name is. I believe um, we have if, done that. And sometimes we do not get anybody coming on. 
I think the suggestion should be if they don't identify themselves, we cut them off. Yeah, I mean, if they're in a public hearing, a public meeting or a public hearing, and they're in the room, for example, with you there, Chip, they have to sign in, you know, and they or don't have to, but we usually get them to sign in. So we have a record of who was there. And if they speak, then we have a record of them speaking. So, um, but I think anonymous attendance at these things is probably not appropriate. If they speak. Right. But if they don't, then... I guess it's like somebody standing in the back of the room and you probably wouldn't necessarily record their name. So I would just suggest that if it's iPad for moon unit, or I don't even know what else that says there, um, I would suggest in the future can, that's- Can we necessary. delete that whole line? Yes. Yeah, just put it under others attending, right? Well, I don't think any of those, well, are any of those names need to be there? Did they any participate? I don't think any of them spoke in that one. They were all just on Zoom. Yeah. Watching. I would I would agree with you, Don. I would say if we're not if we're not if we're going to put people's names on there, you got to know what their name is, not some sort of arbitrary electronic thing. Right. Okay. Thank you for entertaining my question. Okay, anything else? Pages one and two? Three? Minor, minor edit where I asked for my name to be deleted. Maybe you could just say, Henry asked for his name to be be moved to the excuse list for those minutes. Is it? So it's on page three. Very bottom, where it says four twenty six twenty two. Henry asked for his name to be moved to the excused listing for those minutes. Okay. And in the in the Batar piece, I had um, I had added a sentence because I'm sure we discussed this, and I think it's important to the bottom line with regard to the Batar application. So that that sentence um, on page three was added because I think it captures a. Uh, a thought that was central to the decision that we made on the tar. And I just felt like that needed to be included somewhere. The one that says further, further there was no. Yeah, the further, yeah. When these meetings are recorded by Zoom, is the recording maintained for some period of time? Yes. How long? I don't think he deletes them. We have an account with the cloud that sits there. 300 years, Jack. When you're 96, <clears throat> you can go back. I just remember that there was a, a time when we used to record the hearings and then uh, there's this requirement that you save them sort of forever and there's an issue of space, but now that we have the cloud, I, I wonder if like on an appeal like this, we could say to the Board of Appeals, the, the hearings were recorded if you want to listen to them, I don't know. They yeah, that's part online too. They must know that because everything is recorded. I mean, the select board meetings, as you know, are recorded. Um, planning board meetings are recorded and you can go back and, and listen to any of it. At this point in life, I think, I just assume everything I do is recorded. Oh. <laughs> I don't know, it'd be worth mentioning if they want more information about what we said. Yeah, can... yeah. 
Well, if they if they don't know that, Jack, you uh, Chip, um, you didn't have a conversation with them about that, did you? Uh, you know, not that that one. But Jack, you've been in contact with Will back and forth in this process. So maybe if you dropped him an email with, we approved all the minutes. If you need more, go to the cloud. Love and kisses. Okay. Um, any any other comments on these minutes? Make a motion to approve the minutes from May 24th, 2022 as amended. Is there a second? A second. Discussion? Go to a vote. Don? Yes. Henry? Yes. Jack? Yes. Jan? Yes. Bill? Yes. Noel? Yes. And Polly, yes. Okay. Um, that does bring up, sorry to interrupt, it does bring up a question, Chip. Maybe it's worth, I'm assuming this, somebody may know this, Some assuming the state or the state of Maine or the town must have, or if they don't, they should have like a retention policy. There must be some sort of policy about how long you keep public records, you know, um, sort of like IRS tax records, you know, it's like seven, seven or 10 years, depending on your situation. So yeah. the, uh, the written, um, you know, all the written records are forever, pretty much. We got boxes up in the attic and they're all over the place. Um, Angelica just said to point out that all the recordings are on YouTube. So those are there. Uh, I do not know as if there's any requirements, statute or law that says how long uh, digital recording should last, but I can look into that for you. Yep. I mean, there certainly is a, a retention policy for state records, but I don't ever remember seeing anything in law that extended to municipal records. There may be yep. something, but. Just a, just a thought. One one day something will fill up and will not be able to take any more information. Yeah. <laughs> so, anyway. So we'll after Angelica makes the changes, will Angelica or Chip send them to Will Gagne Homes? Yes. Sure. Okay. Yeah. Um, the only other thing I wanted to mention, um, I'd sent the email about the in-person attendance at meetings. And that was precipitated by some conversation at a select board meeting late in June. Um, and Eric had been charged with communicating to board and commission chairs that it was the uh, select board's um, wish that in-person participation happen to the extent possible. Um, I know I have, I have some continuing um, questions um, about that policy. And in reading the policy, I also have some questions about its clarity. My understanding is that the select board is holding a retreat in August. And I think that one of the agenda items is going to be around this issue and the, uh, and the town policy. Um, I've talked to Eric um, a little bit about it, and um, you know his his take on it is that the policy allows flexibility. Um, he did make it clear that no one, um, either the select board or or he or anyone else, um, you know, is going to pass judgment on members' individual decisions about whether participating remotely or in person is appropriate. And um, I do think that Eric believes that, you know, there is, there is flexibility in that policy. I'm having some difficulty reading some of it that way. And that's what I intend to follow up with him on. But, um, you know, I, uh, Henry, you had, um, you had emailed me and I certainly agree with your comments. Um, you know, there is a great deal of government business being done remotely these days, um, you know, the state level. I mean, it's um, primarily remote um, still and things get done, uh, they get done well. 
Um, and I do think that we're all at a point where, um, you know, it's not just a, a matter of, uh, you know, illness or emergency or something of that sort. There are occasions when just the convenience that it provides, uh, not being able to get yourself together to go to the town office and, and spend that time gives you, um, in some cases, an opportunity to participate when perhaps otherwise you wouldn't, you wouldn't be able to. So um, again, I think that um, you know, it's viewed by most uh, as being, as being uh, rather flexible in that regard. But the one thing I did tell Eric was that perhaps um, as a board, if you wanted to think about this question and we could talk about it maybe next time, I was thinking that one thing we could do would be to talk about circumstances where as a board, we felt it was uh, more important or particularly important to participate in person. You know, I'm thinking about things like, um, you know, if we anticipate a controversial application um, and lots of people will be providing comment, um, that that might be a situation where there is an advantage to as many planning board members participating in person as possible. And I haven't really thought all of this through in detail yet, but I was thinking along those lines that if we thought about constructing a policy of our own, when we would um, you know, advocate for more in-person participation under certain circumstances, that, that might be an appropriate approach. Um, I mentioned that to Eric. Um, he thought it was a, you know, a good thought. And I told him that I would, um, I would talk to all of you about that and we can, we can follow up at some, at some future point. So I did want to see if any of you had any specific you know, comments or perspectives you wanted to share tonight. And there certainly is opportunity for us to follow up further with Eric, who could, you know, carry any, any messages or thoughts to the select board as well. I'd like to see Henry's comments. Oh, I'll just forward them to all of you. I was yeah. Yeah. I send comments to the board, of, to the select board about this issue and also about some other stuff about the planning board, which I, I guess my mm -hmm. the board. I'll send copies to the board, to the planning board. Yeah. And, and I Jack my... and I had talked about that earlier and, you know, agreed that, um, you know, there were a number of comments made at the select board meeting that merited some response. And um, I was puzzling over how to do that. I didn't want to just respond on behalf of the planning board without vetting any comments um, prior to with all of you and getting your agreement and timing wise, um, it, it just, it wasn't, it wasn't practical. Um, and um, so Jack went ahead and submitted comments um, as an individual, which I think was very appropriate. Um, but um, I guess I would just add Paula that I mean I'll send my comments to everybody if you want me to but I I guess I would in addition to my written comment I would just say that I think it now that you've now listening to what you've just said about that that interpretation I, I I would hope and it doesn't sound like there's any you know mandate coming down one way or the other but I think I would I think I would ask for explicit clarity and even yeah. perhaps using language like hybrid modeling or something like that that's becoming more common in today's world it's not going to go back to the way it was absolutely my, not. and um i i think the town needs to acknowledge that more formally in a policy rather than being uh, you know trying to identify uh, even even specific circumstances i do agree with you about the planning board side but i think in in general the town policy should be explicitly supporting a hybrid model um, for volunteers uh, to their boards and commissions and committees if they don't the you know that that should also help with recruiting and getting people engaged in the community yeah. if we if we go back to something stricter um 
it really it really could have a negative impact on the community. Yeah. That'd be my opinion. You should say, share those comments with the select board. You can do it online. Use a form. Does it just go into the ether? Disappear? No, I I got it. Got, you know, the way we got those comments about the Batar application from Alex or whatever her name was, if you go into the town website and it's, I think it's- Oh, that sort of form, it's like a form. Contact and you okay. can direct it to the select board and you can sort of cut and paste something in there or type in there. I sure. sent my comments and Dennis Price responded. He was appreciative of getting them. So Paula, when I read your email sending, it was you, right? Who sent the policy along? Yes. Um, and there was the language from Eric about flexibility. I And then I read the policy and um, I, I didn't really see much room in there for what he was talking about. Right. Uh, and um, yeah. being disingenuous as a board member, frankly. Um, so I, I, I guess I would like more clarity as well. I'm, yeah. I'm happy to reach out to Eric directly if you think it would be helpful, like more the more voices just kind of amplifying. Yeah. Yeah, no, I yeah. agree with you completely. And that's, you know, essentially the conversation I had with him that, you know, yeah. I, I, I believed we did need that flexibility that I told him that I did communicate with everyone. And as he had asked, um, I encouraged participation. But, um, you know, I, I really felt that it was necessary to put something in there about about flexibility, because I I agree with the hybrid approach. I, I don't think it would be appropriate. I don't think it would serve the town well to all of a sudden come down hard on the, on the side of requiring everyone to participate in person. And if you're interested in you know, the, the context for all of this, as I mentioned, uh, this, this sprang from a select board meeting in late June. I think it was June 27th. And if you're interested in understanding that context a little better, um, you, can, um, you can watch that. You can go back in and look at that select board meeting because it does make clear you know, what, what happened and, mm -hmm. and what the conversation was and how this issue arose. And, um, it, it, and to save us time doing that, is there a way you can summarize that in one minute? <laughs> <laughs> like what, like you're, is there something negative that happened or yes. is there? Uh, yeah. Uh, yes. Um, there, there is, there is, there is a select board member who has a lot of concerns um, with decisions that are made by the planning board and, and how, um, certain applicants um, have been dealt with by the planning board. And um, um, that select board member also has concerns about in-person participation. Um, and those were voiced uh, in this meeting. Okay. To be clear, the concerns go way beyond remote participation, but I think yes. yes. have the backdrop as well. I'm familiar. I see. I, I, I also think it's probably, I mean, my opinion would be also that the, the town have sort of its own sort of broader hybrid policy, but then it leaves it up to the, each board to decide as a board what works best for that board. Because I could see each committee and board having different different pressures of in-person right. um, needs. Right. Like the, the trails committee, obviously, that's probably going to be more in-person most of the time. Yeah. Um, but, you know, the planning board may be different more administrative in our, in our function. And I, I did tell Eric, my most recent conversation with Eric about some of this was um, today, earlier today, actually. I had to talk with him about something else and I, I mentioned this to him. And I suggested to him um, again that I thought that it would be uh, helpful and appropriate if the select board did address this again at their retreat in August and that um, I would likely provide some specific comment to him to share with them. And my comments will be around um, making, you know, we have that existing policy that they signed off on, but as Jan said, and I agree completely, if you read it, it does not provide the flexibility that I hear uh, people expect that it provides. Um, I, I, I read it much differently than that. And if the intent is to provide flexibility 
and to lean more toward the hybrid side of things and endorse that approach, I don't believe it does that. And I think they need to think seriously about modifying that policy to do that. So. Yep. Okay. All right. Um, surely, surely other towns have already done this. Surely someone in Maine has done a pretty good po hybrid policy, you know, for planning. I, I would expect so. I don't know who that is, but um, I would expect so. Might be something that MMA knows about. I mean, they might be able to provide some, some help with that, but. Okay. No. I, I know you want to go, but I would just add one more thought to this to this discussion um, is is, uh, you know, if if we do, if we inevitably we will be continuing some sort of electronic hybrid thing, at least in the near future. Um, but if it goes if it goes longer, we may we may want to think about, um, you know, a more robust technological approach to the public meeting process or the public hearing process. And I, I think Zoom is Zoom is one platform that that does provide more more ability than what we're using in it and or more controls and things like that. So, I mean, I, I was at a, a Yarmouth town meeting for a uh, Yarmouth planning board meeting actually. And um, they um, they have a very different approach to how they manage their uh, visitors online. So, um, you know, I think some policies around that process is probably worth, uh, probably worth the board thinking about because I, thinking back to the Batar application, just to pick one of many, but that was an example where there was a large number of public comment. I think you could, you can uh, reduce the distraction, keep things very orderly and manageable. And, you know, I think that's important to do and make sure everybody has their, um, it feels like they have the, the attention of the board and the attention of the floor when they're giving their comment. So um, even though now I think about it, some of the batar was in person actually even during COVID. the, the big so. yeah the, the big the big public hearing where the room was full yeah, yeah. Was, but there's been other ones many other ones yeah. where yeah. you know it's confusing to people who are not there and i would encourage us to look to other planning boards as how they manage the system because i think it's helpful for people mm -hmm. so anyway good thought okay um anything else anyone Okay. Thanks. Thank you all. So, so next meeting is August 9th. We haven't polled everyone for um, availability. Um, we'll need to do that because it is August after all. Um, but that would be the next regularly scheduled meeting. Yes. So I, th I think if you saw my email, I can make that one. But after that, I'll be gone for, for a bit. So. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So maybe maybe you could do that, Chip. If you could um, just uh, send out uh, send out an inquiry about people's schedules for August, see what it looks like, and then we can make a final decision on whether to go forward with the ninth or if we have to do something different. Have a good night, everybody. Thanks, everybody. Good night. We're adjourned. Good night. Good night. Good night. Anytime in August, you're here with me. Really? You're the best. Uh -huh. <laughs> no, so August is when my family decides.